Welcome to the Daily Coffee Pro by Mapper Ford, friends. I'm your host, Lee Safar, and today on the podcast, we are talking about choosing the right coffee for your customers, and by this we mean roasted coffee. Uh, thanks to our presenting sponsor for today's episode of the podcast, the Small Business Mastermind Group by Map It Forward. If you are a small business owner or you are looking at starting your first small business in the coffee industry, consider joining one of our mastermind groups so that you can be around like-minded people that are working through some of the same challenges that you might be uh, to help exchange ideas and come out with solutions that feed everything about your experience in small business. Head to the show notes for more details. So let's explore the subject. How do you choose the right coffee for your customers? And I want to start this discussion by saying this. Specialty coffee drinkers occupy a tiny fraction of the amount of coffee that's consumed around the world. And if you are a coffee small business owner and you are considering what kind of coffee you're going to offer your customers but would like to offer them the creme de la creme of coffee, I would ask you to ask yourself this question. How are you going to access the customers that you know will drink this coffee? And then how are you going to access enough customers that drink this kind of coffee so that you can develop a long-term business strategy out of this? And we call this a customer acquisition plan. So if you are looking to target a specific group of coffee drinkers, before you make a decision on whether you are going to absolutely target that that group or not, please consider how you are going to acquire that customer base. This is the hardest thing in small business as far as I'm concerned. And definitely it's been demonstrated through my consulting work that small business owners get very good at designing a cafe or learning how to roast or learning how to fit out a roastery or doing the branding for their business, picking the packaging, all of this kind of stuff. But when it comes to getting customers, this is the thing that puts most small business owners on their ass. And so before you decide and and like make a firm decision about what coffee you're going to be buying for your customers, please ask yourself the question, if I'm going to go for light roasted specialty, high-end specialty coffee, uh, that's the coffee that I want to sell, are you sure you have access to the customers that will buy it? Now, let's take a look at all the other coffee. So when we're talking about high-end specialty coffee, we're talking about coffee that scores somewhere around the 87 and above, mostly around the 88s, 89s and, and higher. But your average specialty coffee drinker is going to be happy with something around the 82 to 86. And those kinds of coffees, even the 82s, 83s, 84s, those are the kinds of coffees that your regular specialty coffee drinker is going to be really happy with as their everyday coffee. They're the coffees that will go happily in your blenders. And so uh, I don't mean blenders like a Vitamix. I mean blenders as in blended roasts. So there seems to be this shift towards and and we're going to talk about this in a future episode, this idea of uh, these fake coffees that people for some reason are calling them fake coffees. But there's an, uh, these coffees are coffees that have been fermented with fruit in them or cinnamon in the fermentation tanks. And these seem to be very popular with uh, 
with co- people who are brewing coffee at home, this seems to be all the rage of people buying coffee. <laughs> if you want to be selling these kinds of coffees, first make sure you can find a market for them. Second, make sure you can afford to buy them and and hold on to that money on the shelf. But third of all, please understand that your average coffee drinker doesn't understand these coffees yet. And so you will have to build out a strategy to teach them how to drink this coffee. The rest of the most people who drink coffee are not drinking specialty coffee. Majority of people in the world drink commercial coffee or commodity grade coffee. And that's something that you will have to consider in your decision making about what coffee you want to offer. I would say consider this one very important thing. No matter what your coffee scores, whether you're buying specialty coffee or whether you're buying commodity coffee, all I ask is that you make sure that whatever coffee you're purchasing, that the producer has been paid a fair price for that coffee. I can tell you unequivocally that a dollar a pound, no producer is getting paid a fair price for that. And Certainly anything less than that, a producer is not getting paid a fair price for that unless they're a highly mechanized, massive yield company. Uh, And that means basically that their machine doesn't use manual picking as labor. They use, sorry, their farms don't use manual picking. They have machines that do all the picking. So it's mechanized and they have huge farms that are usually huge yields and so they just have the machines that go through them pick the cherries if they're ripe or not and everything kind of flows from there because they have lower labor costs they may be able to get away with quite cheap prices and still get paid quite quite well for that but wherever manual labor is involved a dollar does not cover the costs And you should be looking at the very least $3 a pound, at the very least. And that's as a starting price for commercial grade coffee. Just because you're paying $3 a pound, it doesn't mean that that money's trickling back to the producer. So where you can, find out as much as you can by asking The question, one, how much does the producer get paid? Two, who is the producer and how can I get in contact with them? And three, get in contact with the producer and ask them those questions themselves. Why that's important is because then you can then communicate that back to your consumer so that you all know that you're participating in a great value chain. So then becomes the next thing. How do you choose the kind of roast for your coffee? Is it going to be, and this is how customers understand it. Is it a light roast? Is it a medium roast? Is it a dark roast? Should I drink this with milk? Should I drink it black? And look, that all depends on how you want to position your product. Now, what I recommend to most of my customers is for them to have options Uh, when I say customers, I mean my consulting clients, have options that appeal to, in the beginning of your business, have three options. Have a dark roast, have a medium roast, have a light roast, if you know how to roast those three different ways. Or if the roaster that you're using offers those options. Then what I want you to do is start considering how you could market those three products the dark roast, the medium roast, and the light roast to different groups of people and see what you are getting the best results in. Create content around those roasts, those roast profiles. So market them as a darker roast that's fit for a milk-based drink. Uh, Market your singles and your lighter roasts for drinking as black. Find a way to talk to your customers in a way that will make sense to them so that 
you can start to build a dialogue with them that tells them what kinds of coffees they're liking and what they're not liking and why they like or don't like those coffees. And then it's up to you as a business owner to decide, do I want to adapt to what my current clientele want or do I want to see if I can find new customers that like what I have to offer? I describe business like being an artist. When an artist wants to paint something, they have a million different decisions before they get to the final picture or artwork. They have to choose the colors and the the medium. They have to choose the tools. They have to choose the, the way that they're going to approach it. They have to figure out a million different things to finally come to the final artwork. A different artist trying to create the same artwork is going to perhaps make half those decisions differently and then end up in a completely different outcome. Business is the same thing and you have a million different decisions to make every single day to formulate the artwork that is your business. You decide what success means and what it doesn't mean and what the outcome of that piece of art is going to look like on a daily basis and in the long term. I hope you found this interesting. If you have, please consider subscribing, uh, whether it be on YouTube or it be on podcast listening apps. We're very grateful for your support. Peace, love and peanut butter friends. Have an amazing rest of your day.